Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Doctor's Corner. Today we will discuss about hypothalamus. So in this particular video we are going to discuss today about the anatomy of hypothalamus. So in this we will discuss the location of hypothalamus, the boundaries of the hypothalamus, the nuclei which form the hypothalamus and finally the connections of the hypothalamus. So, it is very important topic in the subject anatomy. Also, it is important physiologically. So, physiology also in physiology we will study the functions of the hypothalamus. Okay? So, in this today's lecture we will mainly concentrate on the anatomy of the hypothalamus. However, in between while describing the nuclei, we will try to describe few of its functions. Okay? In the next video, we are going to discuss in detail about the functions of the hypothalamus. Okay? Now, to begin with, hypothalamus is a part of the brain where uh, a part of the brain which uh, constitute the diencephalon. Okay? So, first of all we should know what exactly diencephalon means. Okay? So, it is one of the component of the diencephalon. So, diencephalon is a part of the brain which lies between the cerebrum and the brain stem. Actually, it is almost hidden from the view by the cerebral hemisphere. So, the main components of the diencephalon are thalamus, then hypothalamus, thalamus, hypothalamus, then metathalamus. So, this metathalamus uh, consists of the two rounded medial bodies like medial and lateral geniculate bodies. Okay? Then we have the epithalamus, epithalamus. Okay, which includes uh, the pineal gland and the habenular nuclei and finally, the subthalamus okay, which includes the subthalamic uh, nuclei uh, which, which is a part of the basal ganglia. Okay. So, to make this point more clear, let us have a diagrammatic view. Okay. So, suppose uh, this is a cerebral hemisphere, okay. I will just redraw it. So, this is a cerebral hemisphere. Okay. So, cerebral hemisphere rough diagram. So, this uh, is continuous as the brain stem which consists of midbrain pons and medulla which will continuous as the spinal cord. Okay. This is a brain stem that is midbrain pons medulla which will continuous as the spinal cord. So, this diencephalal structures are present at the base of the brain and where there is a starting of this uh, brain stem okay, with the red color what I am highlighting. So, more exactly at the base of the brain. So, we will discuss about the individual parts later in the subsequent videos. Right now, we will discuss about the hypothalamus. Okay? Now, first thing is location where exactly this it is located hypothalamus in our central nervous system. As you can see in this uh, diagram, this bright green color structure in the center here on this section of the brain. So, this structure it is the hypothalamus. It is the hypothalamus. So, let me show you another picture here. So, again this is a cut section here. You, what you can see here this green color structure is the hypothalamus. So, basically you can see just above the brain stem that is this is the mid brain. So, just above the mid brain ok I will highlight with the red color this mid brain ok there is thalamus ok and just below that there is hypothalamus. However, you can see the other structures also like pituitary gland here. So, this pituitary gland it is suspended by the infundibulum and there is a optic chiasma too. Okay. Here are the structures of the hypothalamus. So, you can see this is the midbrain, okay, midbrain here. So, with the help of the blue color, I am going to highlight now the hypothalamus. This structure, this structure you can see I am just highlighting it with the blue color. So, this is hypothalamus. So, just in front of the midbrain okay? and there you can see there is a third ventricle, thalamus is there above okay? and pituitary is suspended, pituitary gland is suspended with the infundibulum and anteriorly you can see anterior commissure and all. Okay. So, just uh, one more to find to know the location I will just draw one more a rough di line diagram. 
of the brain stem so midbrain pons and medulla continuous as the spinal cord so mb is the midbrain this is pons this is medulla so just above this midbrain there is a structure that is the thalamus okay this is the thalamus whereas hypothalamus will be a mass of the gray matter which will be present below the thalamus okay just i'm um, roughly highlighting this with this red color so this is hypothalamus so anteriorly you will find the optic chiasma with the blue color i am just highlighting optic chiasma so this structure you will come across while studying the visual pathway so you know there are two eyes so posterior to the eyes there is optic nerve from the right and left uh, optic nerve will uh, intersect at one structure that structure of intersection of both this it is known as optic chiasma okay so this optic chiasma so you can find this optic chiasma also in front and also this uh, hypothalamus this hypothalamus which is mass of a gray matter on the inferior surface on the inferior surface there is a swelling uh, which i am drawing this inferior uh, surface swelling it is known as uh, tuber sinarium tuber sinarium okay so this tuber sinarium so this is continuous with the infundibulum and the pituitary gland so pituitary gland will be present here this is roughly pituitary gland okay so this is the relationships of the hypothalamus so on the posterior surfaces there will be mammillary bodies okay there will be the mammillary bodies and in between this uh, hypothalamus there is a slit um, opening that is the third ventricle third ventricle which divides the hypothalamus into right and left half okay however that right and left half is further divided into medial and lateral part we'll discuss later timing just for the location hope the location is very clear so let us discuss the uh, boundaries of the hypothalamus boundaries of the hypothalamus so anteriorly first we'll see anteriorly so anteriorly uh, it extends up to the anterior commissure and the lamina terminalis okay you can see in this uh, diagram it extends from anterior commissure and the lamina terminalis okay so this structure lamina terminalis okay so anteriorly there is lamina terminalis so lamina terminalis extends from the optic chiasma to the anterior commissure so just let me pen down here so anteriorly what is the structure which is present in front of the hypothalamus that is lamina terminalis so lamina terminalis extends from the optic chiasma to the anterior commissure okay let us see this uh, diagram once again so this is the lamina terminalis so it extends from the optic chiasma to anterior commissure okay now let us see posteriorly posteriorly that is the back side of this thalamus okay so posteriorly basically uh, there is a structure known as subthalamus okay subthalamus also the hypothalamus merges with the ventral thalamus at a vertical plane just caudal to the mammillary bodies so posteriorly there are mammillary bodies so posteriorly we can just say in one word subthalamus subthalamus then superiorly superiorly there is a obviously thalamus or we can say there is a hypothalamic sulcus which separates it from the thalamus then inferiorly that is below so inferiorly the structures in the floor of the third ventricle okay so inferiorly it is related to the structures in the floor of the third ventricle which includes tuber sinarium tuber sinarium infundibulum and mammillary bodies and mammillary bodies so actually these are the parts of the hypothalamus itself for example tuber sinarium infundibulum and the mammillary bodies okay which forms the floor of the third ventricle then we will see medially as well as the lateral relations also so laterally first we will see 
laterally internal capsule very important structure of CNS internal capsule and medially there is a cavity of the third ventricle cavity of the third ventricle ok hope the connect sorry boundaries are very much clear to you right now ok so medially the cavity of the third ventricle ok now after knowing this let us discuss the nuclei of the hypothalamus ok so there are so many nuclei and physiologically this nuclei are very important to understand the things so let me first draw this hypothalamus so consider this red color structure is the hypothalamus ok now in the center of this hypothalamus with the blue color what I am showing a slit like opening this is the cavity of the third ventricle so this on either side of this cavity this hypothalamus is divided into two parts one is the right side right side of the hypothalamus and another one is the left side ok however the at the inferior pole both are united this hypothalamus structure at the inferior pole there is a swelling ok there is a swelling this swelling what it is called as it is called as tuber cinereum this swelling it is called as tuber cinereum ok and it is continuous as the infundibulum and finally the pituitary gland ok it is continuous as pituitary gland pituitary gland so there is only one medial swelling that is known as tuber cinereum however on the posterior surfaces there are two rounded bond bond bodies ok on both the sides means right and left side these rounded bodies which I have just marked with the green color these are simply called as mammillary bodies which are again a part of hypothalamus. So hypothalamus basically consists of this mammillary bodies, tuber, cinereum and all. So it is this third ventricle divided into left side and right side. Again this third ventricle which divides into right and left side if we consider only right side now which I am drawing with the help of a black color this structure it is called as the medial part or the medial zone ok so this individually this are divided into medial zone and the lateral zone so this one it is called as medial part of the hypothalamus on the right side as well as on the left side ok then again there is one more part that is called as lateral part ok this is the lateral part of the right side lateral part of the left side with the yellow color what I am highlighting now this is the lateral zone or the lateral part of the hypothalamus ok lateral zone ok medial zone and lateral zone so this medial and lateral zone is found basically due to the presence of one structure known as fornix fornix will divide this hypothalamus into medial and lateral zone ok let me show you one picture how this fornix will divide this into medial and lateral zone as you can see here this is the fornix the bundle of the nerve fibers so which will divide the hypothalamus in the lateral zone of hypothalamus so this is the lateral zone and again into the medial zone of the hypothalamus this is the medial zone ok so basically hypothalamus which is divided into two parts right and left but at the base it is united ok so base is united by the structure forming the floor of the third ventricle that is tuber cinereum and mammillary bodies so right side right side is further divided medial and lateral by the fornix ok now we will take only one side of the hypothalamus ok say left side or right side just one side of the hypothalamus ok now this hypothalamus of the one side it is divided into medial and lateral part ok so this with the blue color what I am showing is the lateral part suppose we are taking the left side of the hypothalamus this is the lateral part and with the yellow color I am showing you the medial part ok or the medial zone or medial part now this is divided by the fornix so there are so many nuclei present in this lateral as well as the medial part so the first nuclei which is present here and it will be present in both medial and lateral part it is called as preoptic nuclei it is called as preoptic nuclei which is part of it is present in medial as well as lateral part 
Again in the lateral part there is one bigger nuclei present and this nuclei, this nuclei very important nuclei which is present in the lateral part or the lateral zone. So, this is actually called as the hunger zone or hunger center okay, or hunger nuclei. So, hunger center or also known as the feeding center feeding center. So, on the lateral side we have only this main nuclei is the hunger center or the feeding center. Okay. Also, there will be nearby third center will be present in the lateral part of the hypothalamus hunger center plus third center. Okay. Most of the nuclei which are, are present only in, in the medial part, but on the lateral part remember this one of the main nucleus is this hunger center the feeder center along with third center okay, and the preoptic nuclei. Now, let us see the nuclei which are present in the medial part. Now, there are many nuclei which are present in the medial part. So, from right to left I am drawing the zones this medial zone is divided into uh, four important zones four important zones okay, from anterior to posterior. So, this side is the anterior side, anterior side where you can see the optic chiasma, okay, optic chiasma where the two optic nerves meet, okay, right and left optic nerves meet, optic chiasma. Now, these zones we are discussing now the medial zone of the hypothalamus it is divided into pre optic region pre optic region these are the various regions okay pre optic region then posterior to this is the supra optic region then we have the tuberal region and the mammillary region tuberal region and the mammillary region So, this is the posterior most part mammillary region. So, here there is a posterior part. Okay. If we see the inferior section this tuberal region is continuous as tuberal this is continuous as the swelling a median swelling inferiorly this median swelling it is called as just now we have studied it is called as tuber cinereum tuber cinereum okay. and this tuber cinereum it is continuous as infundibulum and finally, the pituitary gland. Okay. I am just drawing a rough structure not exactly the anatomical structure pituitary gland. Okay. Hope you are understanding the relationship between the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus and of course, on the posterior aspect with the green color now what I am pointing is the mammillary bodies. Okay. This is mammillary bodies mammillary bodies. Now, in this typical regions of the hypothalamus that is on the median zone there are various nuclei present. Okay, There are various nuclei present let me pen down that nuclei. First is in the pre optic region this region the nucleus which is there is this is the pre optic nuclei okay, which extends even in the lateral part of the hypothalamus pre optic nuclei. Okay let us write the nuclei separately here neatly. So, the nuclei of the medial region. So, first in the pre optic region, pre optic region we have one very important nuclei. What is the name of that nuclei? It is pre optic nuclei. Okay. So, nuclei basically means collection of neuronal cell bodies inside the central nervous system. Okay. Outside the central nervous system if there is a collection of neuronal cell body that is called as ganglion. So, this pre optic nuclei it consists of sexually dimorphic nucleus, okay. sexually dimorphic nucleus. So, it will control the sexual behavior of an individual also controls the release of GnRH okay, along with the other nucleus of the uh, hypothalamus it will re also responsible for release of GnRH during the puberty and all. Anyway, we will discuss that in the uh, functions right now remember this pre optic nucleus consists of uh, the neurons of uh, this particular nuclei of dimorphic nuclei and the GnRH. Now, the in the supraoptic region there will be 
typically four nucleuses. However, there are will be many nucleuses, but uh, this important one will be this one. Four important nucleuses will be present. So, to pend on them or to name them, the first important one is suprachiasmatic nuclei. Okay. So, in the second region that is the supra optic region, supra optic region, supra optic region. So, the nuclei present are the first nuclei is the supra chiasmatic nuclei, supra chiasmatic nuclei. So, the important of this uh, nuclei is it maintains the circadian rhythm okay? that is the day to night 24 hour cycle that is why it is also called as biological clock. Okay? Details we will discuss in the uh, functions of the nervous system. How it will maintain is because it is directly in connection with the optic chiasma and all we will discuss how the connections will be there. Then the second important nucleus in this supra optic region is anterior hypothalamus, anterior hypothalamic nuclei. Okay? Let me write here neatly anterior hypothalamic nucleus, anterior hypothalamic nuclei or nucleus. Okay. So, this anterior hypothalamic nuclei maintain the body temperature, body temperature. So, you know the normal body temperature is around 37 degree centigrade. Okay. So, whenever there is increase in the body temperature, when there is increase in the body temperature, so this particular nucleus get stimulated and it will bring back the body temperature to 37 degree centigrade by various mechanism, by various mechanism like uh, vasodilation of the cutaneous blood vessels, okay? also by increasing the sweating, okay? increasing the sweating. Also this anterior hypothalamic nuclei here we can see there are neurons for the parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, we will discuss this in detail in the section of functions. Okay, right now, just remember anterior hypothalamus also serves the functions of parasympathetic nervous that is whenever it is stimulated, parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated. Okay, so, we are discussing about the two nucleuses which are present in the supraoptic nuclear uh, region, supraoptic region. Now, the third another important nucleus is supra optic nucleus okay supra optic nucleus so third nucleus which is present here is supra optic nucleus so important of if this nucleus is, is it will release or synthesize very important hormone known as adh or antidiuretic hormone it is also known as vasopressin however in small quantities it will also release one more hormone known as oxytocin, but ADH is very important for the water metabolism. We will discuss that in the functions. Okay. Then finally, the fourth important nucleus which are present in the supraoptic region is paraventricular nucleus. Why it is called as paraventricular? Because it is just beside the ventricle, third ventricle. If you remember this basic diagram here, third ventricle, this one medial part, on the medial part the nucleus which is present is the paraventricle. I am highlighting this with the red color here. This is the paraventricular nucleus in the medial part just beside the third ventricle. So, that is why it is known as paraventricular nucleus. Okay? Paraventricular nucleus. Okay? Paraventricular nucleus. So, it will release oxytocin. Okay? Now, this oxytocin is very important for two important uh, functions, it will serve two important function. One is uterine contraction during the childbirth, that is during the time of the delivery. Uterine contraction during the time of labor or childbirth. Uterine contraction during childbirth. Also, this is second important one is it will help in the process of lactation by milk ejection reflex. Okay? detail will study later just timing i'll just uh, show you the tract how exactly this will serve 
this function supraoptic and paraventricular is with this uh, green color tract I will show from the supraoptic uh, neurons here. So, the nerve endings goes to the posterior hypothalamus and they will release and they will release the ADH ok and hypo similarly from the paraventricular nucleus this bundle of the fiber the neuron this is called as neuro hypo sorry uh, so hypothalamo pituitary hypothalamo pituitary axis hypophysial system that is posterior pituitary that is why it is called as neurohypophysis ok. So, it will release oxytocin oxytocin. So, this are actually secreted this uh, hormones ADH and oxytocin are secreted from the posterior pituitary, but actually they are synthesized in the supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus of hypothalamus ok. You, uh, you can see there are four nucleuses which are present in the supraoptic region. Now, what about tuberal region? Huh? Here there are three nucleuses. One is in like a arc like nucleus that is called as arcuate nucleus. So, this is the arcuate nucleus. So, we will bend down here third region is the tuberal region, tuberal region. So, the first important nucleus in the tuberal region is arcuate nucleus. So, arcuate nucleus will release very, very important hormones inhibitory and stimulatory hormone which will control the secretion from the anterior pituitary gland ok. So, the hormones which are released goes from this and directly to the anterior pituitary gland like growth hormone inhibitory hormone, growth hormone, stimulatory hormone, prolactin inhibitory hormone ok. We will discuss in the functions. Now, there are two more very important uh, nuclei which are present in the tuberal region one is dorsomedian and ventromedian nucleus ok. Ventromedian nucleus and the dorsomedian nucleus. So, this ventromedian nucleus it is also known as satiety center, venteromedial me nucleus. So, it is known as satiety center. So, whenever it is stimulated then a person will feel satiety that is after the intake of the food because of the presence of the glucoreceptors ok. We will discuss in the functions. However, there is one more dorsomedian nucleus. So, this will also uh, maintain the behavior emotional aspect ok. Right now just remember the names of the nucleuses. Then finally, in the posterior most part that is the mammillary region two important nucleuses will be present. What are the two important nucleuses? One is posterior hypothalamic nucleus and the mammillary nuclei ok. So, two nucleuses will be present posterior hypothalamic nucleus and second one is the mammillary bodies that is mammillary nucleus ok. So, let us write here mammillary region we will find two important nucleus posterior anterior uh, hypothalamic nucleus present in the supraoptic region posterior hypothalamic nucleus then second one is the mammillary nucleus or just you can write nuclear. So, you can see here in this diagram there are there is one nucleus in the preoptic region, there are four nucleuses in the supraoptic region, three nucleuses in the tuberal region and two nucleuses in the mammillary region. You can remember 1, 4, 3, 2 from anterior to posterior side. We will discuss in detail how this nucleus uh, various nucleus will subserve the various functions of the hypothalamus ok. Is it clear? So, let us see one more diagram depicting this nucleuses ok. So, you can see this central part fornix is divided into median and lateral zone and how this nucleuses are present ok. This preoptic nucleus is present in both the median and lateral zone ok. Then we have the supraoptic region, tuberal region, mammillary region, we have already discussed that various nucleuses which are present in this region ok. You can see one more coronal section of the right and left side here. So, at this center here ok, at this center. So, there will be third ventricle and on other side there will be medial group and the lateral group of the nucleuses. Now, finally, we should know about the connections of the hypothalamus. 
how this hypothalamus is connected to the various parts of our brain. So, first see the afferent connection, afferent connection means the nerve fibers which are going uh, sorry which are coming to the hypothalamus afferent it will come from the various parts of our body. So, it will come from the eye that is called as retinothalamic tract. So, from the retina ganglion cells it will come to the supracasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus. Then we have inferior mammillary peduncle that is from the midbrain tegmental nuclei of the midbrain it will come to the mammillary body of the thalamus. Then we have the thalamo hypothalamic fiber that is there is a connection between thalamus and hypothalamus that is from the nuclei of the thalamus to the hypothalamus. Then we have the pallido hypothalamic tract that is from the lentiform nucleus of basal ganglia that is from basal ganglia to the hypothalamus there is a connection. Then from the cerebellum to from the cerebellum denucleus cerebellum to the hypothalamus there is a connection. Then we have the prefrontal hypothalamic connections ok. So, these are the you have afferent connection that is which are coming the nerve fibers which are coming from the to the hypothalamus that is uh, hypothalamus will receive the signal from the eyes, it will receive the signal from the midbrain, midbrain, it will receive the signal from the, the thalamus, it will receive the signal from the basal ganglia that is the lentic form nucleus, it will receive the signal from the cerebellum, it will receive the signal from the cerebellum also from the prefrontal cortex ok, prefrontal cortex. So, all these structures are connected to the hypothalamus, basal ganglia, cerebellum, thalamus, cortex, midbrain and the eyes ok. Now, the information from the hypothalamus goes to which parts of the brain? Let us see, you can see hypothalamo hypophysial tract, hypothalamo hypophysial tract we have seen in the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei to the pituitary that is to the pituitary gland. So, to the pituitary gland. So, from hypothalamus there are connections to the pituitary gland by the hypothalamo hypophysial tract. Also by the tubero hypophysial tract that is from the arcuate nucleus to the pituitary to the posterior as well as anterior pituitary gland. Then we have the hypothalamo cerebellar fiber. So, from hypothalamus the fibers goes to the cerebellum too. Then mammillothalamic fiber. So, from hypothalamus again it will go information will go to the thalamus. So, there is a connection to the thalamus then mammillotegmental body that is from to the midbrain, midbrain and descending autonomic fibers that is uh, autonomic cranial nerve nuclei and spinal cord. So, ultimately the descending fibers even goes to the spinal cord and from there is a connection to the prefrontal cortex also. So, you can see prefrontal cortex. So, hypothalamus is connected that is different connections from hypothalamus the fibers go to pituitary gland, midbrain, cerebellum, prefrontal cortex, spinal cord and thalamus. So, in this chart we can see the functions of the various nuclei ok, various nuclei stimulation what will happen and all. So, we will discuss continue this in the part 2 that is functions of the hypothalamus ok. Hope you like our video, if so please uh, subscribe our channel and share the